Mitchell got his degree in biology from Utah State University, he worked for the USDA for some years. And then when we, my laboratory got started on doing cannabis research, he calls me up and he said, I'm interested, are you taking graduate students? And he has been one of the top PhD graduate students I've had in my career. Um, we've been, with his help, we've been able to test a lot of hypotheses and he's gonna show you some of the stuff that we've been doing now. Thanks. You guys hear me in the back? Okay. Okay, yeah, so like Bruce said, I'll kind of give a, a little bit of an overview of some of the things that we've been doing. Um, this is in no way comprehensive. We've got a lot, a lot of balls in the air right now, but um, we'll kind of try to give you an idea of what we're, what we're working on up at Utah State. So I'll start out by talking about some water stress trials that we've done, um, a little bit about the CBD and THC production in the plant, um, and then I'll touch a little bit on nutrition as well. So one of the big questions with, with hemp, especially here in Utah, is what sort of uh, drought can it handle? Um, and we are set up at our lab with the system um, that allows us to very precisely apply drought stress and measure the plant's response to that drought stress. Uh, so the way that this system works is we've got 16 buckets there. They're all loaded onto what basically amounts to a digital scale. Um, they're sealed on the top, and so any change in weight throughout the day is water moving from the soil through the plant into the, into the air. Um, and, and from this, we can get uh, an idea of how much they're transpiring and how much photosynthesis they're doing, and I'll talk about that in a second. So we've got this system set up to a data logger that records all of the values. We send it to a computer. Um, and then we can generate some, some useful data. So this is what it looks like um, after we get it from the computer. So we've got transpiration there on the y-axis. And again, that's just water moving from the soil through the plant into the atmosphere. And each of these represents one day. So the sum of each of those points equals the daily transpiration rate for that plant. Um, and we can see this decline here over time, and that's a result of dry down. Uh, so when the uh, plant runs out of water, it obviously has no more water to take up and transpire. And so what does that mean exactly? Well, we, we carried out this study. We kept one group of plants well watered, and then we really hammered another set of plants. And you can see this plant right here is wilted very bad. Um, and, and they were like that for about two or three days. We ran some initial trials where we did a little bit more mild stress um, and the plants responded just fine. So we wanted to follow up and, and really hit them and see how, they, see how they respond. And this is kind of what we saw with our initial trials is after watering, uh, the plant came back, it looked fine, um, but it wasn't up to the standards that it would have been had it kept its uh, well-watered status. Um, and one of the cool technologies that we're able to use is infrared imaging to detect water stress. So uh, plants move, or water moving through the plant is similar to sweat on humans, so it, it keeps them cool. And so plants who aren't moving as much water through their leaves are, are going to heat up. So we can use this sort of technology to uh, detect water stress before it becomes visually uh, apparent. Uh, so what does that mean exactly? Why, why do we care about transpiration? And the reason is transpiration is very tightly correlated with photosynthesis, and photosynthesis is very tightly correlated with yield. Uh, water is moving out of the same holes that CO2 is moving in through, um, and so it's sort of a, a balancing act. And so if you can keep those holes open longer and wider, um, then you allow more CO2 to come in and that results in, in a higher yield at the end of the day. So then we decided to look at the other end of the spectrum. Um, you hear pretty often that hemp doesn't like to get its feet wet. And so we, we thought we'd test that out. We plugged up some of these buckets. Um, 
It's kind of hard to see here, but this is in standing water. Uh, we had three or four buckets that we were able to plug up really nicely and get uh, standing water in. One of the big things that we saw was disease. Um, they were in standing water for about four days before they started to wilt like this, and even after draining them, they were, they were gone. So two of the big ones that we've been seeing are, are Pythium and Fusarium. Um, and here's how the transpiration looked during this trial. So we had these flooded plants um, that stayed fine for about three or four days while they were in standing water, and then they started to decline as the roots started to rot away, basically. But what was interesting is this saturated group. So this was the group that we weren't able to get plugged very tightly, but we were still able to keep the soil constantly moist. And as you can see, it's, it, it did just as fine as the controls. Okay, so now I'll change, change gears a little bit and talk about CBD and THC and what we've kind of been, been seeing in our lab. So one of the, uh, the claims is that, and it's, it's, it's backed up by science, is that secondary metabolism increases under stress. And secondary metabolism is basically the production of, of compounds that aren't necessary for, for growth and development. Um, but they are necessary for the survival of the plant, so they can deter pests. Um, it's basically like a human immune system. And so we wanted to see if the drought stress would increase the CBD and the THC in the leaves. One of the issues that we had uh, with this trial is we had them under 18 hours, so we couldn't flower them out, so we were limited to uh, the leaves. Um, but what we saw in the leaves was was really no change. CBD stayed about constant, and the THC was was so low that it's it's kind of hard to draw any definitive conclusions about that. Um, we do have a trial going right now in the growth chamber. We'll we'll basically replicate this exactly, but with flowering plants, and so we can see how CBD and THC are affected by drought. <clears throat> So on the, on the topic of stress, um, we ran three replicate trials. Everything was the exact same between the three trials, but we saw a really, really low yield in the first trial compared to the, the second and the third. Um, and what we thought might have happened was some early stress in that first trial. We haven't been able to positively identify anything yet. Um, but it's the only thing that makes sense. So we're, we're looking at possible water and nutrient stress during that first trial. Um, so as you can see, we, we saw an increase in yield uh, as the plants got less stressed and we saw a, a decrease in the percent THC and CBD. When you multiply these two values together, you can come up with an absolute amount of CBD and THC in the plant. Um, and what we see is uh, it's about the same. Um, so, so the plants are basically concentrating their, their cannabinoids under stress, um, but when it comes out at the end of the day, they're producing about the same amount. One of the other things that we've, we've seen on occasion is the possibility for CBD and THC to decline at some point. Um, so we see here at about 40 days, um, we kind of peak in our CBD and THC levels and then they drop off uh, after that. Um, like I said, we're seeing it occasionally, but it's, it's not exactly clear what could be causing that at this time, um, but that's something we are working on. But one thing that we've seen time and time again is this constant CBD to THC ratio. Um, it's, it's constant from the leaves to the flowers at any point throughout the plant's life cycle. Uh, the best that we've been seeing right now is about 30 to 1. Uh, we haven't really seen any of these magic 60 to 1 genetics. That's not to say they don't exist, but this is typically what we've been, what we've been seeing. So this was a field, um, here in Utah after... A, a frost event that happened early October. We had two nights where we got really, really cold. Um, and so I drove down and I, I took some samples to see how the plants responded. 
Um, and so this line here is, is the, the day of the hard freeze. And unfortunately, abacus was harvested before this, but, but these two cultivars both declined in CBD and THC. And this just kind of supports our idea that there is the potential for those to decline at some point. It's just a matter of figuring out what can cause that. Notably, the plants looked fine. I mean, we got down to 28 degrees, low 20s, and the plants looked more or less unharmed. Um, so one of the things we've, we've learned is that this plant is hardy. I mean, this, this, this is a bulletproof plant. Um, so it'll be interesting to see what, what sorts of limits we can push it to. Okay, last topic I'll just touch on nutrition. Like Bruce mentioned, there's all sorts of claims about magic fertilizers. Put this on your plant, put that on your plant, it'll grow, you know, two legs and two arms. But one of the big uh, claims within the cannabis world is high phosphorus, especially during flowering. And so we decided to test this and we did it in very controlled environment so we can really get at is it is it the nutrition or is there something else going on and we went from about 70 pounds an acre which is a little under what they recommend for corn up to just an outrageous amount 300 pounds per acre and we saw no difference the conclusions you can draw from this is fertilize it like you would any other plant you know there's no there's no special mix that's going to make cannabis grow any better than than anything else. We tested the cannabinoids, and again, everything came out exactly identical. THC and C, or THC came out identical, CBD the same. And again, we see that constant CBD to THC ratio. So we've got a lot going on in the lab. Um, we're certain to have a lot more information coming out over the next few years. We are working very hard to, to try and understand this plant. Um, so it'll be a lot of fun to see, to see what we can get done up there. Thanks.